Hi, my name is Ed Frawley. I own Learbird. Uh, I'm going to talk about another question that we got in our, in our emails today. <clears throat> we get a lot of emails. We answer them all. Uh, this is a good one, though, and it goes with 40-50% of the people that call us or email us, not call us. Uh, have questions about dominant or aggressive dogs. First, I'll, uh, I'll read the email, and then we'll talk about it. Hi, uh, I need some advice on a muzzle versus a dual leash with a prong collar and a dominant dog collar. My nine-year-old female boxer is 58 pounds. She recently slipped out of a head halter and attacked another dog after we walked around a blind corner. She has shown aggressive behavior since I adopted her from a shelter, but this was the first time she got away and made contact. She is fearful of many things. I realize there are a number of things to do, including behavior. We are now sitting her uh, at all doors um, to ask permission to go outside, but I want to ensure everyone's safety. I've ha started using a prong collar and it seems much calmer, but I also walk her in odd times. Being alert to signals and avoiding other dogs or people is important to me. Do you have any advice? Leslie. Leslie, good questions here. Uh, I have opinions on head halters and with aggressive dogs, some people will say, okay, put a head halter on and take your leash and turn the dog's head away from the dog aggression when it's showing aggression. That may work for some people, but I would have to agree to disagree with them. I find that uh, I would not recommend it. For the, part of the reason is for the reason that you have right here. I think that pe dogs need to learn good behavior. So I'm inclined to use the prong collar, dominant dog collar, and a prong collar leash, because prong collars come apart. And they come apart when you need control the most. I mean, when is a prong collar gonna come apart? When the person gives the dog a correction because there's some kind of distraction over here, and then it comes apart, and then what happens? All of a sudden, your dog is off leash if you don't have a backup collar. So use a prong collar and a dominant dog collar. Now, the question on the muzzle. If you walk in areas where there are loose dogs and you can't walk anyplace else, put a muzzle on the dog. But don't use those cloth muzzles. The cloth muzzle, and, and the only reason to ever use a cloth muzzle is when you go to your vet for very short periods of time because the cloth muzzle holds the dog's mouth closed and it makes it too hard for him to breathe. And if you're going for long walks and your dog gets tired, you're restricting his airflow. It's not good. I recommend uh, one of the wire basket muzzles we have because a dog can drink with those on. They're less confining and it stresses them out less to have one of those muzzles on than some of the other muzzles that are out there. I will say this too, the plastic Jafco muzzles that we sell, they're, they're also effective. They're a little bit more confining uh, than a wire basket muzzle, but they work too. They're a little less expensive. Now, you come to the point of the prong collars. I am absolutely a fan of using small link prong collars over a large link or a medium link prong collar. The smaller links, uh, people first see them and they think that they're for small dogs and that's not the case. I mean, Cindy trains her dog, a uh, 65 pound Malinois with the small bitty links. Most competitive dog trainers are gonna, tra are gonna train with those little bitty link collars. They put extra links in for them to fit and the way they're supposed to fit is right underneath the chin, right up behind the ears. They have to be snug. Uh, the reason for that is you have to put a lot less pressure on a small link collar to get a behavior change. And really, when you stop and think about corrections in dogs, what the per what's the purpose for a correction? Not to punish the dog, not to solve a handler who is upset because his dog is doing something. The purpose and the only purpose for a correction is to change the behavior on the dog. So if I can change the behavior on the dog with very little pressure, that's what I want to do as long as I get the behavior 
uh, the behavior change. So make sure you have a, a prong collar on. Make sure that you have a dominant dog collar on. Make sure that both collars are connected to the leash. And then the question comes up, how hard does that correction have to be to change the behavior? Is pulling into the leash enough to change the behavior? Yeah, a lot of times it is, you know. You're the only one that can determine how hard your dog uh, needs to be corrected. The important thing when you're working with a dog that's pulling into the leash is always have your leash loose. When I see people that are walking a dog and the dog is pulling in the leash and it's a tight leash even with a prong collar on, no, that's not how it is. We teach our dogs to walk on a loose leash. The minute, the instant, the instant that the dog puts pressure on that leash and collar, say, nope. Carry a high value food reward pouch with you, a bait pouch, we sell them. We have these snap open bait pouches, they're great. Keep your high value food in there. Say, nope, give the dog a correction. Again, you determine what it is. And when the dog comes back to you, jackpot it. Food, 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 food. Make yourself more interesting than the dog over there. Now, if your dog won't refocus on you, then you have something else to be concerned about because then you're gonna have to step it up and determine, do I walk someplace else? I did a video uh, for one of our newsletters some time ago on management. Go to our free streaming videos. We have over 700 of them. Type in management, watch the management video that I did a few, uh, I think a month or so ago. That's gonna give you some ideas too. We also have an online course on basic dog obedience. And within that course, we talk about loose leash walking. We talk about uh, controlled walking, where we expect our dog to walk next to our side with his shoulder leaning into our leg. He can look all around. It's not competitive healing. Competitive healing is the dog walks right on your left side, looks up at your face. That is not controlled walking. When we're going to pass somebody on the bike trail, or we're going to pass another dog on the bike trail, we ask and we expect controlled walking where the dog walks with his shoulder leaning into us. That's beyond the scope of how you train that. It's beyond the scope of this Q&A section. It's not difficult to train. We train it motivationally. We train it with markers. We train it with high value food rewards. Uh, it's in the course I did on basic dog obedience.